In the first scenes, Mary Ann and her stepson Elijah drive through the Ohio woods to the home of her late husband's sister. Elijah is playing on Mary Ann's phone, while she tries to strike up a conversation. Mary Ann mentions the nearby zoo, but he says he can't go without his recently deceased father. The woman misses the turn to her sister-in-law's because her GPS is broken, and when she asks for a map, Elijah realizes she has a letter with his name on it in her purse. Marion promptly takes the letter from her stepson, refuses to discuss it, and abruptly reverses. The windshield shatters as Marion drives back along the highway. Marion comes to a halt as a World War II fighter plane soars overhead and crashes into a nearby creek. Elijah gets out and goes over. Marion contacts 911, and Elijah notices someone in the cockpit. Marion descends and attempts to open the canopy, eventually succeeding. As the jet burns, Theodore Cole steps out, but he refuses to leave without the photo on his control panel. Elijah rushes up to Mary Ann after they've escaped the burning wreck. Theodore thanks Mary Ann for her help and identifies himself as a member of the 2nd Squadron. He wonders if they are British or Dutch and what they are doing in Burma. Elijah tells him they're in Ohio, and Ted claims he was recently in a dogfight over a ridge that doesn't exist. Ted notices a nearby water tower for Dayton and recalls growing up in the area. A storm I forms in the clouds above. Sheriff Parker hears Mary Ann and Elijah's account as they transport Ted to a local hospital in Bradford. When she recounts Ted's account of being shot down near Rangoon, Elijah wonders if the pilot was a World War II veteran. An agent claims Ted is hallucinating as a result of a brain injury. Elijah approaches Ted's hospital room and begs his stepmother for money for the vending machine. Elijah enters Ted's room, and he clutches the boy's wrist when he glances at his dog tags. Ted, who is terrified, asks Elijah where he is, and Elijah wonders whether he is a bad guy. Ted affirms that he is a genuine soldier. The pilot is perplexed and claims that it is Christmas Eve 1941, but Elijah informs him that it is September. He begs Elijah for assistance and hands the youngster a whiz candy bar from his jacket pocket. Elijah had never heard of a whiz candy bar and claims to have been taught not to accept candy from strangers. When an officer notices Elijah in the room and pounds on the door that the youngster has shut, Ted urges Elijah to locate his friend, Sheriff Simmons. The police and an orderly burst in after Elijah vows to do so. The cop slams Ted down on his bed, and the orderly administers a tranquilizer to the pilot. While driving to the house with Mary Ann, Elijah tells his stepmother what Ted said. Mary Ann believes Ted is insane, but Elijah wonders if Ted is telling the truth. Mary Ann reveals that was stopped producing these bars 30 years ago. Marion comes to a grinding halt, then drives back to Bradford to check with Simmons. A convoy of government and military vehicles arrives at the creek behind them. Bill Kaminsky, the main agent, phones and says that no one should talk to Ted and that they have seven hours to get him back in the past. Kaminsky informs officers and firefighters on the scene that the route is closed till further notice and that they should remove the incident site 10 kilometers in either direction. He then examines the eye with scanning equipment, and his aide Nina Bowman informs him that he's done it thousands of times and that his equipment won't tell them anything new. Bowman exits after Kaminsky instructs her to get Ted. As Chief McClarty learns of Kaminsky's directive, Mary Ann and Elijah arrive at the Bradford police station. When they ask for Simmons, McClarty informs them that he is not present. Elijah examines a display cabinet, notices a portrait, and opens it to see a signed Johnny Bench baseball. When McClarty gets the baseball, the boy drops it and takes the photo. Marion leads Elijah outdoors, and he shows her the 1938 photos. Ted is in it, but Mary Ann is convinced that it cannot be Ted. Ted wakes up in the hospital and looks out the window, where he sees army soldiers coming up outside. When the orderly comes in to give Ted another sedative, he knocks him unconscious, steals the uniform, and walks out. Ted sneaks out after he finds his clothing, while Bowman discovers the unconscious patient in a hospital bed. Outside, Ted is taken aback by 21st century technology, so he breaks into a car and sets off the alarm. Bowman notices him and summons her men to the parking lot. They rush out in time to watch Ted flee on a stolen motorcycle. Government specialists are dragging the fighter out of the creek and searching through the water for all of the pieces at the accident scene. The ground tremors continue, and a technician, Milberg, informs Kaminsky that they have discovered an anomaly. Milberg informs Kaminsky that he thinks the eye is a doorway and that they must pass everything back through. Kaminsky simply instructs him to repair the plane. When Marion pulls into a petrol station, Elijah claims that the man in the portrait is Ted, not his ancestor, and that Ted has traveled across time. The boy maintains that time travel, like destiny, pulls people to where they belong. Elijah grabs the letter his stepmother took earlier and reads it while Marion checks the overheating engine. He gets out of the SUV and complains because Jefferson, his new elementary school, 
is in nearby Burlington, where his aunt resides. Elijah mistook them for moving to San Diego together and discovered Marianne was going alone and abandoning him. Marianne says she promised her husband that she would always do what was best for Elijah. Elijah wonders if he's caused too much trouble, and his stepmother assures him that he hasn't and that the situation isn't about him. Marianne assures Elijah that everything will be fine and that his aunt will take good care of him, which is all that matters. Ted is approaching down the highway as they pull out, but instead of colliding with them, he crashes his motorcycle. Elijah believes it's fate and asks Ted if he's in the photo. Ted verifies this and points out Simmons, and Elijah informs Marianne that Ted requires their assistance. Marianne relents and asks Ted where he was going, to which he replies that he was heading home to see his wife Pauline. Police sirens can be heard in the distance, and Marianne tells Ted to get in the SUV with them. Marianne drives to Ted's former house, following his instructions. He walks in and shouts out to Pauline, and a woman enters and asks if she can assist him. When Elijah and Marianne enter, the woman, a nurse, inquires as to what is going on. Elijah mentions Ted as Pauline's buddy, and the nurse asks Ted if he wants to say hi to Pauline. She is at her pottery class and will be back in a few minutes. Ted examines the wedding photos of himself and Pauline with her second husband and their children on the wall. He goes outside to wait while Marianne searches for Ted's obituary online. According to the story, Ted crashed the day he came through the eye, the rift, and was shot and died while attempting to elude capture. A newscast on TV reports that Elijah has been kidnapped. When the nurse notices it, she goes to notify the police. Ted then departs through the back door, only to be met by the soldiers. He shuts the back door as Kaminsky summons Ted on a loudspeaker. Ted walks out with his hands up, and Kaminsky and Bowman approach him, saying they're merely trying to get Ted back where he belongs. The ground shakes, and Bowman claims it's a seismic disturbance caused by Ted's presence. Kaminsky reveals that Ted has traveled into the future and that they must act quickly. Elijah rushes out and informs Ted that he died in Burma before leading Ted to the SUV. As Ted locks the doors, the others rush over, and Marion yells to Elijah to get out. Ted drives through neighboring backyards. The soldiers follow him, and Ted comes onto an old moonshiner's road he recognizes. They are pursued, but a tire blows out. Ted runs over to an ancient house after seeing something across a nearby river. Ted leads Elijah there, telling him that it's where he and Pauline last danced before he shipped off. Ted informs Elijah that he never said farewell because of superstition and inquires about his obituary. Elijah tells how Ted is supposed to have crashed and died while fleeing captivity. Ted says as they walk that he doesn't belong there and that he should go back, whereas Elijah belongs with Mary Ann. The youngster claims that his stepmother simply wishes to put him off with his aunt and that he and Ted have nowhere to go. Elijah believes they must keep moving, but Ted asks what the point is because Pauline has moved on and spent her entire life with someone else. He questions if he must die, but Elijah assures him that he cannot. Ted wonders why it is so essential to the youngster that he lives, and Elijah shows Ted a picture of his father and says that he died a year ago in the Afghan war. The pilot apologizes, but the world has no place for him. The two fugitives sit on a bench overlooking the river, and Elijah advises that Ted can reclaim his life with Pauline. Ted doesn't believe him, but Elijah proposes that he go back with a Kevlar vest to protect himself from enemy forces. The boy believes the rift brought Ted there to offer him a second chance. Kaminsky and his crew transport Marianne to a hangar that night. The technicians are reassembling the crashed fighter there, and Kaminsky tells Marianne that she is the only one who can find Elijah. Marianne refuses to assist them, believing Kaminsky intends to send Ted back to die. He tells her there's more at risk than she understands, but Marianne is skeptical. Elijah and Ted return, and Ted expresses his desire to die because Pauline has moved on. When Elijah asks how he knows, Ted recounts that on their first date, he and Pauline found a good luck charm in a cracker jackbox. Pauline pinned the charm to the mantle when they acquired their house. It wasn't there when they arrived, and Ted assumes Pauline doesn't want to remember him. Mary Ann is informed by Kaminsky that the technicians are restoring the fighter to its original condition so that it can fly again and that they can return it in Ted. The agents show Mary an earthquake sites and explain that they were all caused by rifts when things that passed through them were not returned. The rifts have caused many global disasters, and if they can send whatever came through back, nothing happens. Mary Ann, persuaded, informs them that Elijah has her phone. Ted tries to jimmy the lock when Elijah brings him to a closed army surplus store in town. He can't, since it's all steel. Bowman drives Mary and the soldiers back into town, and Mary Ann asks Bowman how many times they've failed to successfully close the rifts. Kaminsky thinks they've overlooked something minor, but Bowman believes the rift has a will and does what it does for a reason. The rift is always open for exactly 11 hours, 
and she believes something must happen during that period. Bowman, on the other hand, has no notion of what Ted needs to accomplish. Ted and Elijah rush to a nearby rail yard as they hear the approaching sirens. A helicopter crew discovers them and summons the others, but Marion asks Kaminsky for the opportunity to speak with Ted first. Marion agrees, and Kaminsky walks over. Ted offers to return with a weapon and protection, but Marion warns him that he can't fight and that the rift has happened before. If Ted did not return the way he came, everything within 10 miles would perish. Elijah is skeptical and tells Ted that they are lying to him, but Marion takes her stepson and tells him that he must go through with it. Ted accepts his fate, but Marion claims that the rift sent him there on purpose. Ted speculates on the explanation and informs him that he believes he knows. When they return to Pauline's residence, Kaminsky offers Ted five minutes. Ted goes inside and finds Pauline working on a problem at her kitchen table. He approaches her hesitantly and welcomes her, and she looks at him and smiles. Ted apologizes for never saying goodbye, feels she has gone on and forgotten about him, and says that he still loves her. When the pilot announces he has to leave, Pauline shows him the charm she wears on a chain around her neck. Ted encourages Pauline to dance one more time, and she accepts. Next, Ted bids Pauline farewell as Kaminsky enters the room. Mary Ann and Elijah are waiting for Ted as he heads to his fighter. Elijah hugs the pilot, who assures him that the boy will be all right, and requests a moment alone with Mary Ann. Ted mentions California and Elijah's loneliness, and the youngster informs him that Mary Ann is dropping Elijah off in Indiana. When Mary Ann looks at Elijah, all she sees is her dead husband. Ted believes the rift sent him there since Mary Ann and Elijah are present, and he believes he was a pilot who perished in a battle like her husband. He believes Mary Ann understands what her husband is attempting to tell her, and Mary Ann turns to face Elijah. Kaminsky wishes Ted the best of luck. Ted, realizing he has forgotten anything, requests the candy bar from Elijah. Elijah confesses to eating it and hands Ted the empty wrapper. It's too late to flee, but Ted claims that the rift isn't about stealing a candy bar but about doing what it wants them to do. He insists that their strategy will succeed and boards his fighter, flying towards the rift while glancing at his photo of Pauline. The fissure closes behind him and disappears. Mary Ann and Elijah exchange hugs before walking away. Mary Ann and Elijah drove to San Diego together the next day. In the end, Elijah smiles as he stares up at the sky, and that's a wrap up. Share your thoughts about the movie using hashtag FilmoRecaps. Stay tuned. See you next time.